Rebecca from Art Resin here working from home. I have Dave filming me from behind the camera. Say hi. Hey. And uh, we've had to pivot really suddenly in the last couple of days. I'm sure many of you have had to as well. So if you're like us and you have kids at home and you're looking for some educational content, uh, we had some stuff on file that we thought would be appropriate to share. So I actually was a, a visual arts teacher for 10 years prior to launching Art Resin. And I worked in three different faculties of education. Um, um, teaching teachers how to teach art. And so what I have for you today is a lesson that I used to use with those teachers. And uh, it's just a fun lesson, it's a drawing activity, and it focuses on proportion. So it's good for kids of all ages, it's good for parents too. And uh, we hope that you'll find it helpful. I think that now more than ever, it is really apparent that we need to hone our creative skills. We need to foster those skills in our kids for all the novel scenarios that will arise. It's creativity that is synonymous with problem solving and I argue that it's actually essential to our mental well-being. So I hope that you give this a shot. I hope that it's helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if it is and um, stay well out there. <laughs> Hi everyone. To start today, I have a philosophic question for you. What is art? If you're a seasoned pro, or even if you're just a tiny little kid, all art is made up of the same building blocks. We call these the elements and principles of design. Kids are very bent on this idea of realism equals good. And it's our job as our teachers to deconstruct that myth for them. The way that we can do that is basically make an environment in our classroom which is supportive, praise them, and you tell them that it doesn't need to look realistic so that they feel safe to try things out, be explorative, and be imaginative. My students always say, I'm not good at art because it doesn't look realistic. And I say, why would you need to make something look realistic when we have cameras for that? What you need to do is show us what's in your mind because we don't have a camera for that. So now we're going to take a look at disproportion because even though it doesn't look realistic, it can still look good. Picasso is a great example of that, and this activity is a Picasso drawing. Okay, so we're gonna make a lovely disproportionate Picasso funny face. I have my paper folded in half. One side's gonna be an organic looking Picasso person, and the other side's gonna be a more geometric. So again, it's math terms, and you can talk to your kids about what each of those mean. On one side, give me a lovely organic shape, and close the shape. And on this side, give me a lovely geometric face. They can look like whatever you want them to look like. Mine happened to look like this, okay? Now that we have a head, we need a nose. What you want to do is start somewhere at the top, make a nose, and end at the side. Something like that. And you can even go off the page. This guy's gonna have a crazy nose that goes way out like this, like so. For the eyes, we want to do one on each side of the nose, obviously, and they're gonna be shifted, so one's higher and one's lower. They can be different sizes. They don't even have to be straight up and down. They always tend to have really bold pupils. This just feels like a girl to me, so I'll give her some eyelashes. Of course, we need eyebrows, and these eyebrows are going to be very expressive. Now we need a hairline, and the hairline is going to come out from where you did the nose. And here's where the repetition comes in. Repeat the line and make it come out of the same spot each time if we can. Of course they need a mouth, so give it a mouth, and it could have teeth, it could have a whistle. And then add anything else you want to add, like this person needs some freckles, I think. This guy needs mm, a little scar on his face. And I always tell my kids, make sure you make things big so you fill up the space, otherwise they tend to do things this big. So now that we've got a nice big head, let's also give him some a body. He's my geometric guy, so he's got to be much more clunky. There, again, disproportionate, so that's why I can get away with doing a small hand. Okay, there she is. So now I have two lovely drawings, and what I have to do is just pick the one I like best, and I'm gonna reproduce that in good copy onto a larger piece of paper. I happen to have paper this big. You can come into school and get some paper that's about this size. If you don't have any at home, or you can just do something if you've got 8 by 11, that'll work too. So we're gonna redraw that on this paper, and then you're gonna color it in. I'm gonna use markers. 
you don't have to use markers. There's no rules about this. You could use pencil crayon, you could use chalk pastel, you could use paint if you want to. You give your students the opportunity to use a variety of different mediums so they can start choosing what they like best and what works for what purposes. There's no hard and fast rules about that. It's art after all. Once your crazy guy is done, all you want to do is sign it with this character's name in a way that you think this character would sign it. So what should we call this guy? Mmm, Hank. So here we've set up an activity where obviously we've got kids to create and you can have them present it. So when it comes time for reflecting, responding, and analyzing, you as a teacher can give them prompts in order to do this. So for example, you could say, how did the artist show that this character has stubble on his face? Oh, all it is is dots. Okay, that's how you can do that. Remember that for next time. How did the artist show shadow on the bow tie? This darker area, it looks darker, it looks like shadow. How did the artist do that? Oh, it's just a series of lines. So you just prompt them in order to get them to look at what you want them to look at. When it comes time for the third part, the art history part, where you're looking at art from around the world and what artists have done in the past and what they're doing in the present, all you have to do is show them different pieces of artwork and say, what did this artist do about proportion? For example, Modigliani. He has very extended long necks and very extended noses in this proportion, but it still looks good. That's his style. You don't even have to know the artist per se. You could just show any piece of work and get the kids to think about how that person used proportion for their rules of drawing.